Mac opened the 1980 season with a regionally televised game against favored Wake Forest. The Tech defense took control early, holding the Deacons to just three yards rushing the entire game. Sophomore tailback Cyrus Lawrence demonstrated his running ability by gaining 182 yards. And quarterback Steve Casey gave a preview of things to come with this 28-yard touchdown pass to favorite receiver Sidney Snell. The defense played a brilliant game, sacking the quarterback seven times. This one was by Mike Kovac. In the fourth quarter, backup quarterback Jeff Bolton hit Sidney Snell, who juggled it all the way to the end zone to put Virginia Tech ahead 16-7. Cyrus Lawrence almost added one more late in the game by breaking away for this 48-yard run. First game decisively against a favorite opponent. The Hokies had come a long way. Football at Virginia Tech is in an important period of transition. Once a consistent winner, the football program has seen only three winning seasons in the last decade. In an effort to turn the program around, to bring the winning tradition back to Virginia Tech football, the university hired Bill Dooley as head coach and director of athletics. Coach Dooley had previously built the University of North Carolina into a national power, taking his teams to bowl games in six of his last eight years there. Coach Dooley feels that the potential for success at Virginia Tech is unlimited. Well, I think our, our program has made tremendous strides, Jack. Uh, we're, at, we're at the point now that uh, we feel that uh, you have to put recruiting seasons back to back, and we've enjoyed two very good recruiting seasons. We feel that uh, with another one under our belt, that we'll be highly competitive, and there's no limit to, to what Virginia Tech can do. But I think you, the old saying is you have to fall before you walk, walk before you run, and run before you sprint. Coach Dooley's first task was to assemble a quality group of assistant coaches. And it is generally agreed that Virginia Tech now has one of the finest young coaching staffs in the nation. Each of these men is a specialist. But each brings to the sport something more than a knowledge of football. They bring a genuine concern for each athlete, both on and off the playing field. This can be the difference between just coaching and good coaching. They're not only interested in them as football players, but they're interested in them as individuals. They're interested in their academic work, they're interested in their social life, and right on down the line. I thank you. You have to have this type of relationship in order to have winning competitive teams. The team came home to Lane Stadium for the second game of the season, and the Buccaneers of East Tennessee State found that Virginia Tech was a team on the way up. Early in the second quarter, strong safety Jerome Pinnell blocked an East Tennessee field goal attempt. Then minutes later, he intercepted a pass and returned it 32 yards to the one-yard line. Steve Casey carried it across on the following play. Later in the quarter, Casey hit wingback Sidney Snell with a 39-yard touchdown pass, and Tech was ahead 14 to nothing. The Hokies dominated the entire game, and late in the fourth quarter, Jeff Bolton hit Steve Skaggs to set up Tech's last touchdown. Tailback Johnny Edmonds carried it over, and Virginia Tech had its second victory. The following weekend, William and Mary came to Blacksburg, and they came ready to play.
The entire game was one of defense, as linebacker Lewis Stewart demonstrated. Tech's defensive line continued to stop William and Mary's running attack. But the Indians held on to a three to nothing lead. Then in the final three minutes of the game, the Hokies drove 42 yards to the William and Mary three yard line. With 37 seconds left on the clock, Steve Casey hit Sidney Snell to give Virginia Tech a seven to three victory. The team hadn't given up, and they now had win number three. Number four was James Madison University. The Dukes soon discovered they were no match for the inspired Tech defense. The offense also put on a dazzling show as tailback Johnny Edmonds broke loose for a 37-yard scoring run. Late in the third quarter, defensive back John Ludlow returned to James Madison on 32 yards. Ludlow had stepped out of bounds at the 15-yard line, though Cyrus Lawrence took it in four plays later. The final score, Virginia Tech 38, James Madison 6. Virginia Tech had won its first four games, the first Tech squad to do so in 13 years. I remember the first time I scored my first touchdown when I was sophomore in college. And just crossing that goal line and hearing those 40,000 fans go crazy. I felt like just running through the fence at the back of the goal line. So it's just something else that you can't imagine how it feels. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to describe because you have to be really, you have to really be the person doing it. You know, it's such a high that uh, no, nothing can bring you down at that moment, you know. Student athletes have chosen to play football at Virginia Tech, but more importantly, they have chosen to receive their higher education at this university. Virginia Tech is the state's largest university, with an enrollment of over 20,000 students. Located in the town of Blacksburg, in the mountains of southwest Virginia, the university has become an institution of national prominence. Faculty members have been attracted from prestigious institutions across the nation and around the world. And this in turn has brought the quality of the student body to an all-time high. The university attracts top students from every state and nation. And the Virginia Tech student receives an education second to none. extensive athletic complexes with excellent facilities for nearly every sport. In addition to 52,000 seat Lane Stadium and 10,000 seat Castle Coliseum, the university has an all-weather field house complete with an AstroTurf football field and indoor track. Other facilities include indoor and outdoor tennis courts, an 18-hole golf course, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, handball and racquetball courts, and areas for gymnastics, weightlifting, and intramural sports. Something for every athlete. The winning streak came to an end when Tech traveled to Clemson's Death Valley. 
Clemson held a 10-point lead through the first half. But Steve Casey narrowed the gap with a third-quarter strike to Rob Burdum. Early in the fourth quarter, defensive end Robert Brown brought down the Tiger quarterback for a 15-yard loss. Tech took over, and two plays later, Casey found Sidney Snell 46 yards downfield. Then, in one of the most controversial plays of the season, Casey pitched to Snell, who was brought down at the goal line. An official ruled no touchdown, so Tech was second and goal at the one-foot line. Quarterback Casey's signals could not be heard over the roar of the crowd, and Tech was assessed a five-yard penalty when he attempted to back off the line of scrimmage. The Hokies had to settle for a field goal and had their first loss 13-10. touchdown pass to Tony McKee. Then in the third quarter, he connected with Sidney Snell for 44 yards and six more points. The defense, not to be outdone, put on their own show. before and heavy rain was predicted but 52,000 fans filled Lane Stadium to see Virginia Tech meet the University of Virginia. It was the largest crowd ever to see an athletic event in the state. Tech dominated the Cavaliers from the beginning. This 41-yard pass from Jeff Bolton to Mike Jackalone brought the Hokies deep into Virginia territory. Johnny Edmonds broke three tackles to take it in for the score, and Tech led 17-0 at the half. The defense kept Virginia in their own territory for all but seven plays. Here, outstanding freshman linebacker Ashley Lee subtracts six yards from the Cavalier total. In the third quarter, Carl McDonald caught Virginia's quarterback for an eight-yard loss. Tech wrapped it all up in the fourth quarter. Cyrus Lawrence broke through a crowd for a 28-yard gain to the Virginia seven. Three plays later, he put the Hokies on the scoreboard again. The game almost ended as a dream come true for defensive tackle Pedro Phillips when he picked off a deflected Virginia pass and headed for the end zone. But an overanxious official blew an early whistle and Pedro's touchdown was called back. The 30-point shutout of Virginia assured Virginia Tech of a winning season. And as far as the fans were concerned, the season was already a complete success.
This was the game of the year. rainstorm at Richmond, and Sidney Snell's 68-yard return of the opening kickoff turned out to be the highlight of the game. Tech had six costly turnovers, allowing Richmond to gain an 18-point lead. The Hokies' only score came late in the fourth quarter. home game of the season was against the University of West Virginia, and Tech had recovered quickly from the Richmond loss. The first score of the game came late in the first quarter when defensive back Mike Sharnas scooped up a deflected pass and went 44 yards for the touchdown. Tech scored again in the third quarter on this 15-yard pass from Steve Casey to Rod Purdom. Twice more, the offense struck Pater, while the defense played a near-perfect game. Nose guard David Marvel added the final touch, and Virginia Tech had victory number seven. Tech's schedule has always included some of the nation's top teams. Teams such as Alabama, Texas A&M, and Florida State. And the next stop was Tallahassee, Florida, to take on the number three ranked Seminoles. The defense, led by freshman Ashley Lee, held Florida State scoreless through most of the first half. Tech took a 7-0 lead with this 25-yard pass from Steve Casey to Rod Purdom. But a series of costly turnovers set up four seminal touchdowns, and Florida State had the victory. The final game of the season was against BMI in the Oyster Bowl at Norfolk, Virginia. Tailback Cyrus Lawrence led the Tech attack, giving four BMI defenders a free ride while setting a new school record for yards rushing. Steve Casey found Sidney Snell in the end zone, and Tech had a 14-0 halftime lead. The defensive attack was led by Robert Brown, who was later named the game's most valuable player. Tech's final score was set up when Casey, who can scramble when he has to, elected to run for 20 yards. Two plays later, Cyrus Lawrence went in for the touchdown. The 21-6 victory over BMI gave the Hokies their eighth win of the season and their first postseason bowl bid in 12 years. Virginia Tech was going to the Peach Bowl. before the game in order to prepare for their Peach Bowl opponent, the University of Miami. Each afternoon, but a bowl trip is a 
wasn't all work. Part of each day was spent sightseeing and visiting with the many fans who also made the trip. the Beach Bowl in Atlanta, Georgia. And what a moment it is for Virginia Tech, the university and its athletic program. After so many years of frustration, since 12 years since they've been to a bowl game, now under the leadership of Coach Bill Dooley, they have arrived here at the Beach Bowl in Atlanta. to an early lead. The Tech, led by the running of Cyrus Lawrence, moved the ball effectively. Midway through the second quarter, Steve Casey hit Mike Jackalone for a 24-yard game. An interception stopped the drive, but Dennis Lowry put Tech on the board with a 42-yard field goal. Miami led 14 to 3 at the half, but Virginia Tech came back out ready to play. Casey hit Rod Purdom, who turned it into a 42-yard game. Cyrus Lawrence capped the 80-yard drive, and the score was 14 to 10. The defense, led once again by Robert Brown, played a superb second half. Miami field goals put the game out of reach for Tech. The final score was 20 to 10. Tech had lost to a powerful Miami team, but there was no feeling of defeat. The season had been one of triumph for the team. Virginia Tech had not had a winning season since 1976, and now they had won eight games and had played in the Peach Bowl. and his staff had brought the winning tradition back to Virginia Tech. The football program has definitely made great strides. Since Coach Dooley and his staff took over, Virginia Tech football has been broadcast by network television each season. Exposure that is very beneficial to the university and players. The prospects for the future look better each year as Tech continues to attract the best student athletes. Well, I guess one word would describe it. Uh, you're looking for what we term as a winner. They come in all sizes, shapes, and forms, and someone that likes to excel, really, and not only on the football field, but off the football field, in the classroom. And when you find this type of individual, then you, you produce winning athletic teams. You know, if you take all the athletes nationwide that come from Virginia, 
and you put them all at Virginia Tech, you've got a school that's better than Alabama. These players have come to Virginia Tech to excel, to strive for excellence, to do something better than anyone else, to push themselves to the limit, and then stop. They have come here to play winning football.